They're cut like a diamond and shine like a diamond. But these weren't formed deep beneath the Earth's surface over millions of years. They were made in a laboratory. These particular precious stones were produced by Alter Created Diamonds. The company, which is headquartered in New York, is part of a growing number of businesses selling man-made gems. And if their president is to be believed, they're poised to shake up the jewelry industry. In 2006, we came to the first trade show and with Created Diamonds, where everybody thought this was crazy. 2016, we came back with Alter. And since then, we haven't turned back and looked, and we're growing at a speed that we're eight times of when we opened, the year that we opened. And the consumer loves the product, consumer connects with the product. And this industry is scheduled to grow to be a billion dollar industry in two years. Alter Created Diamonds aren't the only ones who believe the lab made gems are about to shine bright. Though it's still a niche product, Morgan Stanley estimates they represent just 1% of the global market with sales between $75 to $200 million. The investment bank also predicts this could grow to 20% of the market by 2020. Perhaps the biggest signal of their growth potential came this week when the world's largest diamond maker, De Beers, launched a US production facility and a new jewellery brand featuring synthetic gems after years of imploring consumers to stick with real stones. I, I think it tells you how far the lab credit industry actually has progressed in the, in the last few years and it is a legitimate threat to the natural diamond industry. I don't think De Beers wants to be in the lab credit industry. I think this was kind of a move out of necessity. Um, I, I, again, I think they want to, you know, render lab created diamonds um, um, as non-fine jewelry but more fashion jewelry. Lab made diamonds aren't new, they've been around since the 1950s. But it's only recently the technology has become advanced enough to produce quality gems viable for jewelry. These days they can be made as quickly as a few days and there are essentially two methods of growing them using either high temperatures and pressure or chemical vapours. Both options require a diamond seed, a single crystal diamond from which a larger stone can form. And unlike some other imitation gems, laboratory diamonds have the exact same physical characteristics and chemical makeup as stones mined from the ground. Most people think like, is created diamond a real diamond? Because what we need to understand is we start a created diamond from a diamond. Uh, a sliver of a mind or a created type to a diamond goes into a propri alter proprietary reactor. About 600 hours later of synthesizing carbon, a beautiful alter created rough diamond is born, which is then processed through sophisticated water jet lasers and cut through automatic uh, robotic polishing machines to create a beautiful alter created diamond. But there are a few key differences between lab-grown and naturally formed diamonds, which producers are keen to point out. They say the synthetic gems are more environmentally friendly and they're 30 to 40% cheaper. This creation I'm wearing is made up of 630 lab-grown diamonds. It costs around $50,000, but that's significantly less than what it would cost if it was made from naturally occurring diamonds like the ones behind me. The question is though, can consumers tell the difference between the man-made or a mined diamond and do they really care? It seems the jury is still out. The Diamond Producers Association, which has been vocally opposed to synthetic diamonds and put out an ad campaign last year called Real is Rare, commissioned a poll earlier this month by Harris Insights and Analytics. That study found 68% of respondents did not consider synthetics to be real diamonds. But other polls point to shifting consumer attitudes, particularly among a younger demographic. A recent study by luxury brand research firm MVI Marketing showed that 70% of millennials would consider a lab-grown diamond ring. Jeweler Melissa Joy Manning says that while she's open to working with man-made gems, she hasn't seen that much demand. I think we don't see as much consumer demand right now because it's so early. I think jewelry is a traditional medium and people wear it for different reasons and a lot of it is based on tradition, heirloom and kind of this idea of what we're told to like. 
And this is a brand new product that I think people just don't understand. So I think once that, that hits more of an apex and a tipping point, we'll begin to see a little bit more interest, especially in regards to the responsibility of the stones, because people, especially my customers, are really, that's what they're coming for. And there's kind of no cleaner stone than uh, the lab-grown stones. Manning said price is also a big factor influencing customers. Her brother bought a lab-grown diamond for his wife's engagement ring because it cost 20% less, and he thought it looked better than a mined one. But even if consumers are beginning to be more open to synthetic stones, analysts say the diamond industry shouldn't have too much cause for concern yet. I, just, I don't think it's there yet, and I think to really get to the point where this is a you know, significant industry, it's going to take a tremendous amount of you know, marketing and branding. Um, and, and again, the, the companies that are producing, I think they have relatively limited resources for that. And at the same time, I think they're more focused on the, the lo you know, longer term picture, which is producing you know, high quality scale lab created diamonds for use in high tech application. And let's say it seems unlikely man-made diamonds will devalue the market for real stones, as they'll always be more rare. But with even industry giants like De Beers driving the message that lab-made gems may not be forever, but are perfect for now, this emerging market is likely to shine brighter in the future. For CCTV, I'm Reuters reporter Jade Barker.